Just bringing some of the stuff over that I picked at this estate, getting into the estate sale part of this pick and had this laying on top and realized, oh, I forgot about this. This is another uh, recent acquisition at the used tool store from about a week, uh, two weeks ago, maybe. Uh, this came up on his weekly featured video, so I uh, got there early to make sure that I got in and got this. And what this is, is this is a Minotoyo dial caliper. You can see the price there, 30 bucks. It's an early one, and what's unusual about it is it's a 4-inch. I do not have any 4-inch dial calipers. I think I have a 4-inch cheap Chinese digital caliper, maybe. Actually, I think I might have even gotten rid of that. But this is a genuine Minotoyo. Uh, it's an earlier one, but it works perfectly. Nice condition. Um, you know, it, as if you couldn't tell it was an early one by the box with the crushed, like the red red velvet interior here, like a jewelry box. But um, I just kind of thought it would be neat to have a set of these. I know some guys like these because you can see when I'm holding it in my hand, you don't have that extra part hanging out the back there. So if you're reaching in underneath into a tighter space, maybe it might be a handy thing to have. So uh, I wanted that for myself. I don't know. You know, I say that and then uh, it might strike me to just decide to post it online and, and make a kick, uh, you know, a quick 10 or 20 bucks on it. But these are hard to come by. So if, you, if you're, you know, if you see one of these, uh, turn it into money. <laughs> Now, this is the first batch from this estate. So I put together everything he had on the table. I put it all down one end and then ran through it. And we went back and forth and we finally came to terms and I made the purchase. I honestly don't remember what I paid for all of this stuff. I forgot to log it and it's been actually a couple of weeks at least since I picked this stuff up. So... Mm, my apologies if you guys wanted to know. I, I honestly couldn't tell you. I probably paid a lot. <laughs> All right, so this first item here, uh, let's see, this is a Minotoyo dial indicator, 950-156. And that is apparently, so the, the guy who owned this stuff, apparently his nickname was Red. You know, kind of like Morgan Friedman's uh, character there in Shawshank Redemption. But... Uh, so we got the internal hole or bore adapter. Um, we got a micrometer wrench, which obviously doesn't belong to that. All right. We got this little rod was just kind of thrown in here. And it, yeah, it does fit that. So that appears to be... Okay, so that's interesting. There's a small rod that might not be original to this set. It was just in here. This rod is the correct one by the looks of it. We got the... Uh, the clamp and then of course where the rubber hits the road is the Mitotoyo indicator so this is a back button indicator style um, I think I might have one of these in Federal or Sterrett one of the two I don't remember so that's a nice little set right there I should be able to sell that all right next up we have a Sterrett box Oh, nice little uh, inside micrometer set. Okay. So this is an 823 set. And this is the one that has the thicker, it's like a tubular micrometer set. There's some goop on here, but I could tell just by looking at it that that's going to clean off really easy. Matter of fact, where's my uh, solvent? Good enough. All right, I have one of these sets for myself, um, but I think it might be the next size down. I'll have to double check. Yeah, it must be, because here's my 823 and I can see it's gonna be a smaller, smaller set. And this is like brand new condition, this set. I've had more than one of these, and every time I would get a better one, I would just kind of like trade up, sell the one I had, and keep the nicer one until eventually I got to the point where I got this one that's like brand new so that's kind of a dilemma because um, this one's got this one's in mint condition and it's got the original paperwork and it's got the little insulators on the tubes K 
Okay, the box is in great shape and it's got the original box even. So, do I want to part with this honey for the money? <laughs> Alright, so here's the explanation of the catalog numbers right here so we can see. So we've got one, two, three, four, five rods, the handle and the micrometer head. Where this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rods, the handle and the micrometer head. I think I'm gonna actually keep this this one here, even though it's, you know, somebody's got their nickname emblazoned on it and it's not as clean looking because this is gonna be plenty good enough for my uh, my purposes. Well, you know what I can even do? I could even put them both up for sale and just let, let people know that I'm selling one or the other and they can choose. You know, I'll have to look up values too and figure out what I want to do on that. It's not the worst uh, dilemma to have, huh? All right, this is just a plastic box, but it had a couple of these indicator clamping posts. They appear to be no names, a couple of no name snugs, another micrometer wrench. Unless we'll put this one in there with that. Actually, I'll, yeah. I was going to say, I've got a box of micrometer wrenches. I could throw that in, but I'm going to hold off just in case I come across some micrometers in this buy that I forgot about. We got another Sterrett box here. And what's in this Sterrett box is not a Sterrett indicator. I know the indicator that's supposed to go in here. I remembered having a couple of those over the years. Um got the model number of it I think I even sold one not too long ago what's in here is a uh, a rather disappointing federal test master it's a really early one jeweled movement it's got the switch on the side seems to work perfectly fine it's just because of the age of it and you know not being a uh, so I'm going to leave that out because that obviously doesn't belong in there. Peacock pick test. Peacock tells me that this is going to be made in Japan. That's not a bad little indicator. That's not a bad DTI. It's a more modern one. It's a half thousandths. Peacock made in Japan. Pick test. Number 2000B. It's in perfect working order. Dovetails are in decent shape. It's even got a dovetail adapter. Uh, rod on it. It's got, oh look at this. I can see that little plastic bag right there. It comes with extra points. Comes with a little tiny uh, point wrench and a couple other uh, little adapters here. That's not too bad. That'll make a nice inexpensive indicator for somebody. And this box says Mitotoyo, but it's pretty heavy. And it is a Mitotoyo indicator. This is also a half thou indicator. This is going to be another nice indicator for somebody who doesn't want to pay a lot of money and wants a decent indicator. Works perfectly fine. We got a couple of little uh, goodies in here. There's a that's a handy one there to, to go on the dovetail and turn it into a post. And then there's a smaller size in there and a couple of little tchotchkes. All right, nothing wrong with that. Go grab the next pile. All right. Next up, we got another old box here. This says uh, Ames, BC Ames Company, Ames Cylinder Gauge. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, all right, this is a neat little, uh, neat little item. This would have been for back in the day. Uh, all right, I stuffed some other stuff in here, I guess, just for transportation. This is a, this is a square that I couldn't see any markings on when I was there. Something like this I usually don't pay too close attention to and don't offer a lot for it when I'm factoring it in because I never know what it's going to be. But this one actually is an old brown and sharp. It's marked brown and sharp, but it has no numbers on it, so I don't know. Uh, stare at last word. A little bit of a stiction to it, which is, you know, sometimes happens with these last words. Actually, not too bad. This is actually in pretty good shape. 
Yeah. All right. So we got a nice little last word here. No case for it. No, uh, no nothing else, you know, to go with it. Um, so this is a cylinder gauge. This is for measuring the amount of wear in a cylinder. Um, judging by the size of it, I'm thinking maybe small engine. But basically it's an indicator mounted on this special bracket and we've got this long handle so you can reach down into the bore. And then, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we've got multiple rods. I think you can, I think there's supposed to be other points here that are missing that you would install on here. Um, and that would give you the, uh, the ability to, to do different sizes. So I'm not quite sure with it being so incomplete, not quite sure what the value is going to be on that. And I'm having no idea how this is supposed to be stored in there. Aim cylinder gauge, setting tool handle. Okay, so this belongs to this. Now, what doesn't belong to this that I could see in here, I'm wondering about this rod right here. I'm thinking this doesn't belong to this. Or does it? Would you use this on a huge cylinder? All right, hold on. Here, there's a picture of it all put together with the handle on it, so you can table for use. Two inch to six inch. All right, well, there's no way in heck that you're gonna use, oh, okay, I see. This, this is two pieces right here. So if we take this, this is gonna be the longest. If we put this on here, this must be for six inch. So this this is the rod for six inch and then we got this smaller rod here. Oh I see here are some more here are some more tips right here. So alright so it comes with two contact points. This is a little extension. Maybe one of these holes is for storing this extension. It looks like it's short enough that the case will close. Yeah, okay. Alright, so it looks like we're missing one thing that goes here. So oh this right here, what you're seeing right here is I recognize this as being parts to a uh, um, an Indicol indicator, like a Model 178, which I think I got one of these. I found it in amongst the stuff, and then later when I was looking through the other junk, I saw this stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, good. So unfortunately, I don't think this is going to give me a... Uh, oh, no, here it is. Here's a parts list. According to what I'm reading here, what we should have here is two points, one short point, uh, one short extension, and then, well, that's actually weird. They're showing one, two, three, four, five. They're showing six things, and there's really only five holes here, so go figure. And then this is supposed to have a total of well, this, and then uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spacers. So these are spacers in here, these little washers. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that looks complete. See, that must go there. All right, so I just read this chart. So this is usable from two inches up to six inches if you have all of the extensions. And according to this chart, there's actually supposed to be the two contact points that I have, this half inch extension, which I have, and then this is a one inch extension, which it actually says there's supposed to be four of them. Because for the, high, for the lar largest diameter, it actually calls for four one inch extensions put together and the eighth inch contact point. So interesting thing is this rod, you know, looking at it, you can see it's different, different metal and everything. This rod doesn't belong to this set originally, but clearly somebody made this. They probably lost some of the extensions and still wanted to be able to use this and figured out that, hey, you know, if we just make a rod that is of the correct length, which this rod is probably going to be, since the contact point is included on this rod, I'm guessing it's going to be uh, three and an eighth inches. Actually, three and three eighths inches, which is the size of the other contact point. 
So this is the equivalent of having three one inch extensions and the three eighths inch contact point, which gives you, and actually with the half inch extension, extension added to that, that gives us five and three quarters of an inch up to five and seven eighths. I'm sorry, up to five and 15 sixteenths. Change the contact point, that gives us six inch. Eh, it is what it is. I have an old Starrett set somewhere around here. I haven't seen it in quite a while. It's in an old wooden case with a top that slides open and it's called a, um, I think it's called the engine kit, engine inspection kit or something like that. And it's basically got one of these uh, bore gauges like this, but it's uh, actually a Starrett one. It's really old. This is the S190 uh, screw jack. It's supposed to be one set. I've gotten enough of these over the years to know what a complete set was. When I first got there, um, it, I, I just found like the screw jack laying there and I dug through some other boxes and stuff and ended up finding all the pieces that I put together here as one. And I ended up with, we've got the original, the body, and then we've got this, uh, threaded rod with the flat and then this one with the cone all right so that's that's your starting point then we've got two spacers we've got this and this so that is a complete set that's uh yeah one two three four five six seven i believe that is a complete set these are easy to sell guys like these i've got enough of these now so i could sell that one Keyless chucks, rusty, not that great looking, but uh, you know, the jaws look good on them. And then of course the, the big thing is who makes them? Well, I'm happy to say this is an all brick, one thirty seconds up to half inch. And this one is also an all brick. Can't quite make it out, but it's up to three eighths. Couple all brick chucks. Those are gonna be, you know, they, they turn nice and free. So the outside rust and everything, yeah, I mean, that makes them not look so great, but these are still going to be really nice chucks for somebody. I already have these. I don't need multiples of them. So. And then we got uh, this old, this really old micrometer. Now, the reason why I threw this in is because I knew because of the rust and everything, he wouldn't value it very much. But the thing is, a while back, I found a stare at micrometer amongst a bunch of junk that I bought. And uh, it ended up being a really early patent date. And I found somebody had sold one on eBay for crazy expensive money, like almost $100 or something stupid like that. So I ended up listing that mine on eBay. Mine was in rougher shape. You know, it was rusty like this. And I got... A one, I started at a $25 opening bid, decided to do auction, and I only had the one and only bid. So the guy got it for $25 plus uh, a few bucks shipping. Um, but still, normally these, they're not really worth much. you got to get the right one. I like that it's got the really thin little spindle on the end there that isn't broken off. That's kind of like a giveaway that it's one of these earlier ones. But it's a craftsman. So it might be uh, something that one of my craftsman collection guys might be interested in, but it's going to be probably not a very valuable one. Just wanted to give you a better look at that. Tiny that spindle is. And never broken off. Rusty as hell and the lock still works. And then this looks like almost like a friction ring. Hmm. Kind of neat. It's a nice little... Uh, piece of history there it's history pal and then deja vu deja vu look at this another minatoyo micrometer but this is from this estate so it is a good good thing that i grabbed that box because one of these two micrometers is going to live in it this one uh carbide faces lock works perfectly fine friction thimble works perfectly fine it's a tenth so it's 0 0.0001 resolution micrometer not bad at all. Here's the rest of it. If 
5C call it stop. Always handy to have. A little deburring tool. This is the Umpco Model 500 Burr Quick, they call it. Noga makes a version just like this. It's even got a little extra cutter on there. Oh, this is nice. This is a, um, a Starrett 216 micrometer. Um, this is one of these direct reading micrometers. These are actually pretty pricey. This one got some surface rust on it and, and it feels a little clunky. So maybe it could stand some service. I don't know. But the good news is it actually is working. It goes to all zeros. Might be worth putting a little effort into cleaning this one up. Ratchet works. Lock works too. All right, so that's fully functioning even though it doesn't look pretty. One parallel machinist clamp. It's a brown and sharp 754. Here's another rod for that 5C call it stop. Oh, that's a nice tap wrench. That's a nice stare at 93B. And it's a general 164. Unmarked edge finder. Another one of these quick quilt clamps. That's a stare it. That's a genuine stare it indicator post. There, here's a uh, decent fly cutter. It's actually marked Made in Japan on the bottom. Not bad. And here are the uh, aforementioned Indicals. This one is actually not an Indical. This one is marked uh, Made in Japan. And it's missing a lot. And this one is also made in Japan. So neither one of these, these are both knockoffs, but they're decent quality. So um, this one is almost complete. So maybe, look out here. Yeah, that'll work. Great. And the last item we have is this box with this little doohickey in it. So this is a uh, old, old brown and sharp box. You can almost make out the whole brown sharp name here and what this is is a nice little uh, neat little depth gauge it's got a vernier on it it's got a fine adjust got some rust on it hey that's a number 600 you know what's great about that if I can find it somewhere around here from a while back I remembered finding a skinny little blade and I think that it was for this um, depth gauge, only it was a long one. Hey, I found it. So it's a 12 inch scale and it's marked uh, brown and sharp 600. So that is gonna be an extra scale for this. Cool beans. So if I decide to sell this, I can sweeten the pot by adding this 12 inch scale. Uh, either that or maybe I'll keep this for myself. I've got something similar to this I kept because it was kind of cool, but you know, I don't need to have so many of them. So, all right, so this is going to wrap up this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, pick. And uh, if you did, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Take care.